How's it going guys? Welcome to this very interesting coding challenges. So essentially I had an application from one of my customers which wanted to compute a rolling average of the number of boxes produced in the last hour. Now this is quite a bit different from the usual application that you'll see in the manufacturing where you're going by the last hour. So for example, when you walk into the manufacturing floor to a machine, what's called a case packer, you have a number of cases produced, for example, from 11 a.m. to 12 or to noon, then from noon to 1 p.m., from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., so on and so forth. And that data is extremely critical to make decisions on the managerial level. That being said, if you're in the maintenance or the operations department, you want to see the rolling number of cases that was produced in the last hour. And you also sometimes want to get the average. What was the rate at which the cases have been produced? So to explain that further, in, let's say you walk into the machine at 1135 uh, p uh, AM, for example, then you want to see from 11.35 down to 10.35. So for the last hour, regardless of when you walked up to the machine, not necessarily from, you know, 10 to 11. And now you have a number which is now 11 to 11.35, which is being computed in real time. Now, this application, I'm going to walk you through it and the solution that I've created. But essentially, this is just a simple prototype. And you should spend a little bit of time figuring out how to configure this. This is not something that I would expect you to do in an interview. But if you're sitting at home and you want some practice programming PLCs, this is a perfect, uh, perfect problem for you to work on. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. Now, there's only going to be four rungs, as you can see here, but they are going to all play a very important role. So first and foremost, I'm getting the PLC time, which is going to be in seconds. So I am getting a counter that is reading the actual PLC time that is programmed on the system. And I am mod using the modulo instruction, which is very seldom used. But what this gives us is when I divide it by 10, it gives us the remainder. So it makes it easier for me to create a timer of 10 seconds. Now, remember that in this case, uh, what I'm practicing is I'm not doing it for the entire hour, but I'm essentially doing this for two minutes just to demonstrate the functionality of the application. So every 10 seconds, I'm going to capture the number of cases that have been created, and I'm going to create what's called a FIFO or essentially a first in first out algorithm that's going to give me the the array of the number of cases in the all of the last 10 seconds multiplied by 12 to get the two minutes and then i'm going to compute the total number of cases in the last two minutes and of course then i can get the average now i'm also going to subtract the length but this is just a essentially a um, array placement uh, functionality because we are positioning in 11 but we need to get a lower count where the where the dint is being inserted in any case next we have the counter so this is just a very simple xic with a counter so if i toggle this with the control t shortcut if i select my uh, my counter then you'll see that the box counter is going to count up and you'll notice that based on the time, so once the time reaches zero, so essentially every 10 seconds, like I was mentioning earlier, the counter is going to reset back to zero and it's going to start case, uh, counting cases anew. So every 10 seconds, I capture the number of cases created. And of course, the cycle continues to repeat. Now, how do we capture the number of cases created? Now, this is where it happens. So first of all, I'm looking at the timer to be at zero seconds. So like I said, every 10 seconds, the uh, the counter for seconds is going to be reset to zero. And at that point, I have a one shot, which goes into this FIFO load instruction. So very, very, very important instruction that you should be familiar with. But what the FIFO load does is it takes the counter value so the number of cases once again accounted by this box counter two and it shifts it shifts it into this fifo array three 
let's uh, really quickly take a look at that. So what I'm going to do is just increment the counter a couple of times. So I'm going to select this and place a certain value there just so it makes it easier for us to see what's going on. So let's uh, let's place, for example, a, a five here where we're going to let it reset and then I'm going to place some more numbers in there. I'm going to right click on this array and I'm going to go into monitor. So here we have the array and you'll notice that essentially from this 11 down or from this zero to this 11, there's going to be this array that's constantly shifting upwards. Now it's shifting upwards because the FIFO is essentially putting in a value at this number 11 and then everything else is shifted upwards. So essentially what this does is every 10 seconds, it creates a new value, it shifts it into the array, and then the entire array shifts. So essentially what this creates is that for the last 12 values, because of course we're starting from zero all the way to 11, we're storing the number of boxes for the last 10 seconds in each one of these, in each one of these dints essentially for, from inside of this array. Now this is, let's go back to the, to the program because this is very important to understand. So once again, the counter value is taking into the array and then this repeats every 10 seconds based on these equals equation. Now the next thing I'm doing is of course I'm resetting the counter because now we know that we've captured a certain number of boxes, whether it is 15 or 12. Um, it could be used, of course, uh, you know, in the thousands. And then I'm going to compute the sum of the boxes. So the way the sum is computed, first of all, I do a clear on the sum. So I want to reset it back to zero. And then I'm going to use a for instruction. So I've already explained the for instruction in a different video, which you can find on the channel. But essentially, the for instruction is going to call this routine, which is called FIFO average. And it's going to start with an index. And this index is going to go from zero. And in this case, it's actually 50 that I, I need to change this 50, but it's going to go from zero all the way to terminal FIFO length. Now let's look at the average routine. This average routine is fairly straightforward. All I'm doing is I'm taking the sum and I'm adding the current index and then I'm going to increment the sum by that amount. And I'm going to repeat that the number of times that I have in my array. So essentially, in this case, it's going to repeat this 12 times and add up every single cell inside of the array into this FIFO sum. So I'm going to walk through this a little bit slowly, but essentially then I'm, all I'm doing is I'm dividing the sum by the length, which is 11, and I'm getting an average. So let's go back. Let's just tab back to the array which at this point should all be set to zero, if I'm not mistaken. That's not the second. There we go. So the array, as you can see, obviously this value is not being computed because remember we're going up to index number 11. So I can just set this back to zero. But it's adding this value, this value, this value. So all of these values up until 11 and it's storing them into that FIFO sum integer. And again, this is done through the for loop instruction, which is sitting right here. And it's doing it through incrementing by one in order to call that array. So extremely, extremely useful. I do highly recommend that you attempt this, um, this assignment or essentially this problem on your own. And last but not least, we have a rung, which once the FIFO reaches the highest value, it can simply reset and allow another number to push it upwards. So it does essentially an unload. You do have to specify this and unload into just a run random dint. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's all there is to this application. I do want to point out a couple of things. So if we go back to this rung, we can definitely subdivide further. So we can, instead of dividing into 10 seconds, we can divide into, let's say a minute for something like an hour, because you do want the rolling average, but you don't need it to the last uh, millisecond. And you can always average out if you really want to add the current counter, you can add the current number of boxes and add them into that average. That would also give you the total 
uh, running some and you can of course get a more precise average that being said in this case it's running every 10 seconds so the average is going to update every 10 seconds but you could make it even more uh, precise if you were to get this box counter accumulated in that equation as well and once again i can like i said toggle this any number of times so picture this as being boxes that are passing by or some kind of different product that you're measuring and of course the fifo is not limited to counters it can be used to time different things it could be used to take an average of you know the 10 different measurements that you've taken for a specific part so just a very very versatile instruction all around and i highly recommend that you understand how this structure can be used in your programs thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye